Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour. Cheers, George. Cheers. Mm. <gasps> mm. Very refreshing. That's a lot of mint. And it matches with our shirts. Your today, aesthetic George. is spot on, Rachel. Green on green with yeah, this your mint. Yeah, little olive green jacket and all of this. This is great. And I like some fresh mint for a fresh new year. It's wonderful. Well, this is the show where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. Everything from pop culture, current events, and money. And today, you are in for a treat, and so are the listeners, <laughs> because we're bringing the most overused January Instagram caption to life, Rachel. New Year, new me. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I imagine they it's all say it. Yeah, and it's a new me. Do people really say that oh anymore? Is that gosh. a thing? I do think. At, at the end of the day, it's just New Year, same toxic you, Brittany. <laughs> 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 that the page just turns over, just the calendar, just the sun comes up the same way. You're the same person you were a month ago, That's Rachel. how it is. It is the truth. But we are going to talk about the money habits that will create a new you. And some of the bad habits that we all have, not just money, but in general. That you need to drop. Yeah, habits in general, because New Year, it is. It's a goal-setting, thematic time in life. Ooh, good use of thematic. And uh, we're also going to sprinkle in, Rachel, a few of our own goals to keep it interesting. So I hope you brought some to the table. Before we begin, let's talk about what we're sipping on today. And uh, for our mocktail lovers, you're going to love this one because it's a mojito mocktail. Mm. Really good. I'm just going to put that out there, but you got to wait till the end to get our actual rating and reveal the cost per glass at the end of the episode and, of course, recipe in the show notes. Yep. Okay, George, I do love a new year. I do feel like the flip of the calendar, even though we just kind of joked about it, it, there is something about it that thinks, oh my gosh, we're starting fresh. We're back in January. There is something that kind of revives the spirit. It's amazing. Yes. Now, there's a, that we're there's not a psychological school, switch. Like, I feel flips. like in school, it was always August. Oh, like, it felt like the new, new school year yeah. was the new year. But, you know, we're working people. That's right. We got careers. We don't get the summers off. No, we don't have summers off. So, yeah, the January, it, there is something really real about that. And we have an entire year ahead of us, George. That's right. I want to try to visually express how we feel, Rachel, because sometimes, you know, we can't find the words. And so we're doing that with some a little mental health meme check. And uh, usually mental health and memes don't go together. But we're going to try today. There's some today. funny memes here. So we're going to try to explain it. Okay. All of you on podcast, we're going to try our best. So All here's what we have. New Year's resolution themed memes from the internet. And we're going to choose the one that best describes our mood toward the year ahead based on a series of questions. And Rachel, for those that are listening maybe on podcast, I want to encourage them to watch on Spotify or YouTube so that they can see the memes for themselves mm -hmm. because while we're great describers, they're just going to miss out on some yeah. of the great visuals. We'll try. We'll try to describe. Um, okay, so the first one, what's your general attitude about New Year's resolution culture? Ooh, general attitude. Not great. So let's see. Oh, there's <laughs> okay, some great I got, memes. I got one. <laughs> All right, I got mine. You go. Okay. Mine says a wow. New Year, same me. Because I'm perfect, even though I know I'm not, Aww. but I just don't like New Year's resolutions. But it is, um, oh no, she's from Pitch Perfect. So it's basically like, same year, oh, same uh, me, because I'm perfect. Uh, Rebel. Rebel. Rebel, that's Rebel her, Wilson. yes. Yeah, 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 Rebel yeah. Wilson. Rebel, yep, that's her. Okay, I funny. chose <laughs> the like some. Because I'm not perfect, but it is funny. <laughs> well. Oh, oh. Tell it, my family that. It's more about perception than reality, okay. Rachel. <laughs> What's yours? Uh, I chose the, the some e-cards ladies. Oh, yeah. The old school memes. And it says, <laughs> yeah. let's pretend we're going to be better people in the new year. Okay. That's kind of how I feel. It's kind of gossipy <laughs> about it, but it's all fake. Yeah, that's my general attitude toward the culture. It's like mm. everyone's bragging about how great of a person they're going to be yep. for the 17th year in a row. It's a little much <laughs> oh for me. Oh, my gosh. Okay, next. How do you think we as society handled money in 2023? Ooh. Mm. Okay, I got mine. You got yours? I think I have mine, too. Yep, go. New Year's resolutions are hard to reach sometimes, and it's a cat on what looks like a like a bicycle bike, um, like an exercise bike at home. Oh, and he's stuck on the he's seat. He's stuck on the His seat. His stomach is just hanging no over the seat. no way he can get to the handles or the pedals, and it's funny. That feels like America to me. What's the cat doing on the bike? That's humor. That, that I chose the bad luck Brian meme. You've seen the bad luck Brian. <laughs> 
He's got like the braces, kind of goofy smile. Oh, yeah. And it says, makes New Year's resolution to run at least three days a week, sprains ankle on January 2nd. Okay. <laughs> that feels like it. That's society, Rachel. Yes. They had very good intentions, but yep. then like life happened and they're like, well, I guess it's not in the cards for me. Yep. Okay. Maybe next year. Ooh, now I get to use the one I really want to use. Okay. So this one is, how do you feel about your own 2024 resolutions? Okay. <gasps> I got mine. I got mine. You go first, ladies okay, first. Okay. Do we know the actor? That is, who's this? That's not an actor. That's it's just not an a actor. guy. Oh. It's just a guy. All right, he looks there's a guy. Like he's like, he looks like he's like definitely 1992. Point wow. to his head like, hmm. And it says, won't break your New Year's resolutions if you don't make any. That is classic racial oh, behavior. <laughs> Keep the bar winning. low so you can we're always winning. get over it. That's definitely mine. That's definitely mine. <laughs> mine What's is yours? this uh, Alice in Wonderland. And it says, <laughs> when you realize you've had the same New Year's resolutions for the past seven years, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> That's me. I look oh back and I'm like, gosh. oh, yeah, I said I was going to read 26 books for the last seven <laughs> years. And I haven't read 26 in am. seven years. And here I am. So that's me for sure. All right. Last one. How do you feel about your 2024 money goals? Ooh. How do I feel? Mm -hmm. I got mine. All right. I've got a baby on a beach, like a base, like a classic baseball shirt, right, where it's all green on the sleeves, white, mane. Two-tone. And he's so got sad. kind of a fistful of sand, and he says, my, near, my New Year's resolution, be awesome. Check. I went with the same one. It's like, just, just kill it. <laughs> I went with the same one because I, that's how I feel this year. Yeah. You know, I had a baby. Just be awesome. Uh, so I'm like, now that I have a baby, it's like, what's left to accomplish? Oh. You know? It is true. Family's first. That's at the top of the list. I agree. I agree. So that's it, Rachel. We did it. And I hope so, so I hope you good. guys relate to those memes. And there's a history to this because they came from somewhere, right? They didn't just like poof magically appear one day. Ooh. It started from different traditions. So okay. actually, when you look at the ancient Babylonians. As one does. <laughs> very <Classic>. normal. <laughs> they are known for creating the concept of New Year's resolutions. They're also known for being the first civilization in recorded history to celebrate the new year which for them began in mid-March. Those Enneagram threes, Rachel. Not in January. Um, which is, yeah. I mean, March feels much better to be in Times Square watching the ball drop than January. I kind of feel like March would, springtime, it kind of feels right. They probably That's got true. something right. Mm -hmm. And their New Year's tradition included a 12-day festival, and they crowned a new king or reaffirmed their loyalty to the current ruler. Oh, How yeah. exciting. Now, here's what's crazy, too. Making promises to pay off their debts from the previous year. I did not realize that they were doing, like, debt-free screams back in the ancient Babylonian yeah, so times. For a, in one calendar year to pay off their debt. Now, for <laughs> Christians in the 1700s, the first day of the new year was meant for reflecting on the past mistakes and committing to do better in the future. So, this literally, is... they were like, be better in the <laughs> 1700s. That was still the thing. Isn't that funny? We haven't changed much as a society. Humans. Who knew? When you try to white knuckle your way through life. There's Ever since the fall there. of man, Rachel. In 1740, John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, the Methodists, if you will, I uh, will. created I will. the covenant <laughs> renewal service, which took place on New Year's Eve. So again, this kind of ends up being a tradition. This was more among, of a spiritual thing here, yeah, of course. Yes. Scripture readings and hymn singings and... Yep. You know, versus the rowdier celebrations that we now yeah. know and love. And to this day, in popular African-American Protestant churches, they hold a night service on New Year's Eve for the congregation to pray over the New Year. My parents do that at the old Arabic Baptist church, and I always thought they were such fuddy-duddies. Oh, really? But they, they, would, like, they would be like in a prayer thing for like, it felt like hours. Uh, and so all the kids would be downstairs being like... Happy New Year! Happy it's New midnight, Year. and they would still be praying through it. I'm like, y'all, like, wow, let's end at 11:59. Someone set an alarm here. The ball's you know? dropping. Yeah, we gotta watch it. Yeah, <laughs> that's In beautiful. New York. Have so you good. ever attended like a New Year's Eve church service? Is that a thing for you? No, I don't think so. Well, mom and dad, I will say you. this: mom and dad had a New Year's Eve party. Oh, that's fun. Growing up, I mean, they probably did it for. I mean, I all, I remember all through elementary school and middle school, and it was all their friends. And yeah, I like that was like a memory. It was a I Ramsey have. tradition. Yep. Mom and dad did a New Year's Eve party for a really long time. Do you and Winston do any like reflection on the past year as you head into New Year? Do you do like a big date night? Do you have yeah. a tradition there? Our anniversary is December 19th. Oh. Mm -hmm. So we, we've done really well getting away for our anniversary, especially in the 
um, previous well, few right years. It's right around the holidays. It's yeah. chaotic. I know. But we do. We usually can like... Mm, um, skedaddle. We do skedaddle for a night or two. <laughs> and I feel like we will, th- at that dinner especially, we do reflect back, right, as one would. I'm like, what a year that was. Yeah, and we kind of go back through stuff. And yeah, we do. We we reflect back. But I think that's honestly the anniversary sets that up for us. If we didn't have that. Yeah, you may kinda, not kinda, do as much. Yeah, probably not as much. But I feel like we would, though. Yeah. Again, because I feel like it's like a closing of a chapter, you know? Well, I feel like we just run and gun so fast in our culture, and I'm guilty of this, mm-hmm. where you never really take time to reflect. You're just like, well, we can't, don't have time. we got to move on. Yes. There's a lot going on. Okay, so George, are there um, some bad habits in general that you see Ooh. for people? Maybe a little judgy of a question, but we're going to go there. In the 2024, of like, yeah. like things that people just need to quit. Okay, let's rifle through a list, and okay. we'll just go back and forth. Okay. I'm going to start with impulse shopping. I think that has increased, and mm-hmm. I'm guilty of it. If yeah. I look at my bank statement— Amazon, 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 click, click, click. It's so easy. It's so easy. From the comfort of my own bed to just spend willy-nilly. I know. So That's I got to cut one. that. All right. Um, here's another one. Saying like a lot. Oh, are you guilty of that? I'm very guilty. I'm so sorry to some people that listen to this podcast. I know I do say like. I haven't heard you say it in this episode. You've been doing great. Thank you, George. And that's on it's growth. Nice. <laughs> and that means I'm growing. No, but people use the word like a lot. It's kind of a bad habit. Like, oh, like, yeah. like, like. I'm going to say not combining bank accounts with your spouse. That's been a recent. Oh, yeah. It's not a trend, but I've just, a lot of calls we've been taking on the Ramsey show, a lot of the problems stem from not really being aware of what the other it's hand hard. is doing. Not being on the same page so with your spouse. So not being on the same page. That's a big one. Uh, how about not turning your blinker on when you turn? turn is this lines? a Nashville <laughs> thing? Because I feel like it was illegal in Boston to just not use blinkers. Golly. And I, the South is like, well, now's my time to turn. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, change lanes right now. <laughs> they see my car, so I feel like that's good enough. It's fine. <laughs> I know. It it does drive me nuts. I'm a blinker. I love a blinker. I think it's great. It's a weird thing to love. <laughs> I do. I do. never heard anyone be like, you know what? I because love I turn feel signals. Extra it is. <laughs> Anyways, if you're in the habit of not using one, you should use yours. Another bad habit. Chasing rewards and airline miles oh, with yeah. your freaking credit cards. Yeah. You're not winning, okay? Not winning. Add up what it's actually costing you, and you will realize it's bad math. Yeah. Here's another bad habit, not having an emergency fund. No savings. People kind of get used to living on the edge. Yep. And living on their credit card. Break that habit. Get some cash in the bank, people. Yep. Uh, leaving the TV on while you sleep. Are you a TV watcher uh, while, while you no, fall asleep? No, I'm not. Well, John Deloney's telling me all the effects of like, you know, screens <gasps> oh, really? at night and all that. And yeah, well, yeah, I think that, yeah. I'm guilty with my phone, my but phone we're not TV that, watchers. Yeah, mine sleep. would be the phone. Uh, having a $500 car payment. That's right. Or any People car payment for that matter. Just in the habit of having payments, cut that habit. That's a general bad habit. It's just yep. payments in general. Yeah. Uh, here's one just not investing, not taking advantage of your mm-hmm. company's 401k match, not investing enough. Those of you that are investing, you know, three or four percent, thinking you're going to retire one day, it's not yeah, going to happen on that up measly the ante, amount. Up got to up it. Um, here's my last one, George. Okay. The habit of being late. Oh, I'm guilty. I can be sometimes guilty of that, but I've learned to leave early. Oh. Like leave my house early. Like I, I give myself like a five to ten minute buffer, and with kids. I don't know how you even do that. This has to be so true. You gotta, you gotta prepare everyone. Now it's like. Prepare eight minutes before we gotta leave. You yeah. start you start rounding the troops. So it takes about eight minutes to get everyone's socks and shoes on and in the car buckled up, all to go. But when you, when they're a little little, it's like a um, twenty to thirty minute or you know, the older they get, the less. But they can tie their own shoes. Unless you're King Charles, which I ima- imagine he demands that you Well, he's got Velcro. <gasps> <laughs> That's privilege, man. That- <laughs> That's privilege. Is that light up too? You got the light up? <laughs> he's got the light ups. Are you kidding me? And they're sketchers. They're so cute. <laughs> what a life of luxury. In the queen bed <laughs> the with best. his light ups. No, I know. It's rocking Love it. it. Rocking my it. last one, Rachel, uh, looking at my phone first thing in the morning. Oh, that is a bad habit. I hate well, it. Well, so they I say. I hate that I do it. Okay. And I only hate it because people tell me I should hate it. Oh. Is it really that bad? That's is my fair. question. Like, we fall asleep early. Well, when, it, We go to bed very early. Our friend Dr. John Deloney's like, I go outside and ground myself in the grass and <laughs> stare at this. I stare at the sun for 45 minutes before I do my cold plunge. <laughs> then I take 14 supplements and I thank my sponsors. <laughs> Born. I'm like, Dad, enough. Cut it out, man. 
I know. Just be a person. Just doom scroll Instagram for a few minutes before you decide to get up angrily. <laughs> Anyways, that's that, Rachel. Let's t- let's talk about some. Uh, we talked about some money habits that we want to leave behind this year. Let's talk about what people can do differently this year to win with money. Let's go to the positive side. I love it. Can I start? Please. Create the habit of budgeting. I guys. knew that was coming. I know, but it's the number one. Like for me as a spender, it is the, I'm telling you, it is the it is the best feeling ever. And we track transactions. We use the Every Dollar app, do Every Dollar Premium because it connects you to everything. And it's just, it is amazing. It gives you such control. So if you have not been in the habit of budgeting, do it, but don't try to do it on Excel or a sheet of paper. You can, yeah. but it's just like, it's, you're not going to find it. It's nowhere. But what do we all have attached to us all the time? Mm-hmm. And the app, it's all there. So. And if you have a spouse, it. it's way easier to use every dollar because they can log in yes. and have access to the same budget you do. Yes. And you just track everything together. It's great. That's good. Uh, another habit that I think people should get in the habit of. Mm-hmm. You like how I did that? That's good, George. Bad grammar is what it is. Uh, (laughs) Building the emergency fund. Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of the habit of saving, which I understand is hard for a lot of people to go like, you want me to save six months, three months of expenses? That's difficult. And so we tell people to start with $1,000. That's an achievable goal for a lot of people. Yeah. You might have to sell some stuff. You might have to get a side job. You might have it already. But that's a great starting point before you start paying off debt. And then before you build that solid emergency fund, that is such an amazing financial foundation. I love no it. No debt plus emergency fund. That's some financial peace right Feeling there. Feeling good there. Uh, mine would be be in the habit of meal planning every week. Ooh. So I do this on Sundays. What's your ha- strategy around it? Just it just takes like two minutes, but you just look through the calendar. And you're like, okay, what do we have? For us, it's obviously night dinners. The evening, like, okay, Monday night, we're recording Smart Money Happy Hour till 6 p.m., Okay, Winston, what are you going to do for dinner with kids? Is it pizza this, night this, this. on Smart Money Happy yeah. Hour night? Or crock pot meal. Like, what are we going to yep. do? Tuesday, okay, I'll be home by 4. I can definitely make this here. I mean, we literally go through. Amelia has soccer on Wednesday. So we'll probably, with her, do that. I mean, you just sit there and schedule out life. And it's the dinners for us. Because if you don't plan, you don't have anything. And they end up eating Honey Nut Cheerios, which oh, may buddy. have happened this week. <laughs> it's <pretty> like <laughs> cereal night. Breakfast for dinner. <laughs> Breakfast, yeah, yeah, pancakes. And they're like, oh, my God. But it is, you, you, or you end up getting takeout or something. So planning out your meals will save you money. Love it. Another habit, and this is something my wife and I did that's actually fun in some ways, is try a 30-day no-spend challenge. Whew. It's hard. But it's, this is where you only spend on the necessities. You're covering your bills. You're putting food on the table. But there's no like luxury purchases, no Amazon, no Manny Petties. We are trying to spend as little as possible. Yep. But it, it what's works. really fun is seeing every day how much you're actually saving instead of spending. It's encouraging. And it's 30 days. Most yeah. people – choose a month that works for you. Don't choose like, you know, Christmas December. month where you're like, oh, my gosh, we're traveling and it's holidays and gifts. But choose a month that works for you and your family. But it really is a game changer if you can do that once or twice a year. I love that. Um, mine would be wait 24 hours before making a big purchase. Ooh. So – and again, you could put big into – you know, $100, hundred dollars, Yeah, whatever you want to do. But for me, I'm like, I can just so easily be like, oh, yeah, that's fine. It's or fine. anything that's impulse. Like you just saw yeah. an Instagram ad. Yes. Maybe just wait. That's why we say add, save add it. to cart. That's what I'll do. I just add it to the cart. And then you go back because they will find your email and they will email you. Like you love things in your cart. And then two days later, it's so funny because for me, I'm like, oh, no, I don't, I don't really even like that. I don't need that. Nope, no. Nope. All the emotions gone. It is a great The excitement great is gone. Habit. The urgency is yes. gone from whatever the post was. Wait a day or two. The mm-hmm. sale might be gone, which yeah. also helps. That's right. That's good. Okay, here's another one. A great habit, and this is something that I've helped a lot of people with, and it gives me great joy, is moving your money that's in savings to a high-yield savings account. Oh, yes. Instead of your brick-and-mortar savings making, mm-hmm. you know, 0% interest or like 0.01, mm-hmm. you can make, you know, 4 5-plus oh, percent yeah. interest every Four, month. Oh, yeah. Six. Yeah. It's amazing. Which is amazing. So you got, you know, let's say you had $50,000 in your mm-hmm. savings account. You could be making 2500 bucks a year guaranteed. Yep. So that's awesome. So that's a great so move good. to make. So great. All right, George, for you, personally. Oh, no. How are your uh, money habits, money resolutions? Ooh. Do you have any new things you're going to be doing? Like, what's it look like for you in 2024 when you look out in the money part of your life? What are you thinking? 
here's what I'm thinking. Uh, a baby has changed some things in the budget. Oh, yeah. And it's not just, you know, diapers and formula mm -hmm. and all the little accoutrements. Sure. And the clothes and the onesies and the seasonal onesies that they're not going to fit in a week from now. <laughs> but there's also, you know, babysitting on top yes. of our doggy daycare. <laughs> and so it's added some line items in the budget, which is fine. You know, mm -hmm. we're in a financial place to do it. But there's there's something about it where you have to kind of reassess. And so we've taken a even closer look at our budget since having a baby. Yes. And so it's not that I've gotten lazy on the budget, but my wife and I are now like, we got to like look at the budget. Like there's just a little more attention to the details of it, seeing where we can shave yep. and how we can still enjoy our life because we want to go on date nights still and go on vacations. And so totally. those things just get more costly when you have a kid. And so that's the, yep. that's been the big change for us is – understanding what finances look like with a kid now and saving for college. Yes. And health insurance is now more expensive. Yes. And so all of those things have added a few financial Yeah, that's fair. some financial weight. Yeah, that's How about good. you guys? Um I think as we look out I think last year we were kind of last minute on different things and I feel like bigger ticket things like a like a trip or something. Oh. And it was a little bit of like we felt I felt scrambled a couple of times in some decisions we made. So we did say, like, we just want to do better planning. Like, when we look out, we need to look at – so once your kids hit school, oh, they yeah. have breaks. And it's like, okay, are we going to intentionally do something over this four-day break? Or you got fall break. You got spring break. You got – I mean, all these things. And so we want to look out as much as we can and say, hey, if we're going to do a trip with the kids, like, let's do it well. But let's let's actually like put some boundaries around it, plan it instead of, like, last minutes feeling like, oh, gosh – Look here, go here, do this. Like I just feel like we were scrambling last year a yeah. lot. Is so it more us, about it the kids that... now with vacations? Like now is that as so much, they get yes. older? Yeah. Are we doing Disney again? Uh, Wait, you I'm can't ruin the surprise. I'm going on a two day Disney. Just two days. By yourself? With my girls. Oh. I'm doing a you girls said trip. I'm going instead of we're doing a girls going. trip <laughs> with the no other than Christy Wright. Oh my goodness. Who used to be here Ramsey and her that daughter. Is epic. So we're gonna go for Is this that her daughter's first two days. time? Mary Grace, yes. That's precious. I know. This is literally an example of last year because we booked it in 2023. It was like, and of course, you know me, George. I was like, you're like, yeah, absolutely. Let's, Let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. And then you're trying to figure it out with but all of this. And it's like, man, the last minute stuff. But it makes life exciting. And that's what's hard for me to balance. It's like, yes, we need a plan and we need to be wise and look at everything. Mm. Absolutely. But also when fun opportunities and experiences for me. It's not like, oh my God, I see a new car. I want a new car. It's not that for me. It is like an experience that you're going to have with a friend. You have more or FOMO over experiences versus stuff. All day long. All day long. So, so mine, again, my New Year's resolution, goal, all the things with money is that we, we need to plan out better our lives. I have as much noticed possible. that really like wildly successful people and wealthy people, like they plan out their year. Yeah. Like they know what's happening nine months from now and who they're I getting know. dinner with. And I am envious of that level of, you know, I know intentionality. It's so true. Okay. So for the listener, George, who thinks, okay, I want to make different choices when it comes to my money, but I don't know where to start. Ooh. Where would you advise them, George? They want to make different choices. They don't have a clear focus goal, it sounds like. They're just like, listen, I'm disorganized. I don't know where to go from here. Maybe they have some debt. Maybe they're trying to invest more, you know, wisely. They want to up their investing. Maybe they want to be a homeowner. So regardless of what the goal is, I think step one is to do this kind of reality check. And that does come back to making the budget, but mm -hmm. not to be a nerd and be like, you have to do a budget. Yep. You have to figure out where you are. Like, what is our actual take-home pay? What should we be keeping in our bank? And then what are our actual expenses? Where have we been spending? And you go, oh my gosh, we spent $1,200 on food? Mm -hmm. I thought it was closer to five. That's good. It's going to disgust you at first, but then you can start making a plan to start shaving down some areas, carve some margin in. Maybe you go, we need to up our income this year. Mm -hmm. We need to really cut back on these subscriptions. So the budgeting is really the first step, but you have to have a clear goal that you tie to the budget. And that might be debt payoff that you're yep. focused on yep. or the emergency fund or investing. I know some of our listeners, they might feel discouraged because they, they feel like they can't make real progress in 12 months or they've fallen oh, yeah. off the wagon before. There's some shame, guilt, yep. baggage. They're just like, hey, that's all nice, the stuff you guys are talking about. It's not in the cards for me or it feels too hard because of my situation. What would you tell to that person? Oh, gosh. I would say 12 months, in a way, it's like a, the snap of a finger, right? But in some ways, it it is so much time to change so much. I'm like, 
within three months how much your life could change with money if you just create different habits. I mean, the traction, that's the great thing about money habits changing is like, at least the clarity gets there so fast. Like when you start doing something different, like you cut up the credit card or you say, hey, I'm going to actually list out my debt snowball and I'm going to start working on that smallest debt. You, like the clarity can come so fast. Now the work's in it, right? It takes 18 to 24 months to pay off debt. So if you go through a year, you may have one more of those. But you, you're able to change and see progress so quickly when it comes to money. That's what I, that, I think it's so That is important. There's it's a like lot of people. quick progress. Yes, If it yeah. takes nine months to see any, you're out. Yeah, And that's no. what I love and, about the baby steps. Yep. So yeah, you can find that fast progress. And again, I mentioned every dollar our budgeting app, but for real, that, that can feel like progress. When you do that for one or two months, then it feels like, oh my gosh, I actually have a say over my money. I'm actually tell, I'm actually planning my money. And that in and of itself, that's just one month of it. You could just budget for one month and feel that. So the wins can be quick to get some traction. And again, life happens. You may go downhill. Something may happen, and it probably will. But that doesn't mean you don't continue to, to do the great habits that you put in place because they work. I'm like, time and time again, again, for some people, their story, it's longer. Uh, they have more debt that they're bringing into the picture. Some people have less income than more. I mean, all of it factors in. But as you start to see that those habits change, you will see progress. Well, that reminds me of our favorite philosopher, Miley Cyrus, and her great, <laughs> great quote. It ain't about how fast you get there. Ain't about what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb. <laughs> And those are words I live by personally. So to help you on the climb, you got to give every dollar a try, Rachel. Yeah, absolutely. You haven't. Download it, do it. And we've got a really cool offer. If you want to try the premium version, when you buy my new book, Breaking Free from Broke, you get three months free of every dollar premium to Beautiful. try out. Because we like we want you to apply the principles that I'm talking about. Yep. And a budget is the way to live those out. I love it, George. Love Good it. stuff. Ha good. Man, happy New Year. Happy New, New Year. Year. New Wishing you. you the best with your wild New Year's goals. So good. Of All right. Disney. Thank you. Do the kids know? <laughs> do they listen to this? Uh, the girls. Yeah, they do know. Oh, they know they're going. Yeah, they do. I was like, if Uncle George spoiled the surprise, <laughs> yeah, no, I would never it. live you it did. down. Thank you, though. I would make them. What's edit Charles it out. doing while you guys are in Disney? Can we oh, do a guys him and, trip? Him and Winston are gonna be chilling. Maybe me, Winston, and Charles do a little guys hey, camping trip. Do a camping trip. You know, maybe go hunt. Kill something and drag it home, Rachel. <laughs> you know? Live off the fat of the land. That's what people do. You should be a man. I want to go full bear grills. Just <laughs> gut a deer. I don't know. <laughs> That's been on my bucket list. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, it's almost the end of the episode, and we close out every episode with... Guilty, Guilty as, as charged. charged. And this is where our producer usually... Lindsay, but Alex. Guest producer Alex. He's here. Shout out. Uh, gives us a new guilty charge question every week. And if we are guilty, we have to take a sip. So, Alex. All right. Do you have a memory of a weird dream that lives rent free in your head? <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember my first nightmare as a kid. What? <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. That's so... I do, and it, I guess it looks... So I don't trauma. think about it, but when you said it, I was like, I can go back to that dream in a second. Can you tell <laughs> us about the nightmare? I will. I hate when people talk about their dreams, so I'm doing my <laughs> right now. Something about a nightmare makes it... It is. I was, I was little. A juicier. I would have been kindergarten. Have I told you the fun fact that mom and dad let us watch whatever we wanted? Have I told you this? Oh, yes. Except for Fern, Fern Gully. Gully and Rugrats. <laughs> Other than that, because the kids run the house and they're watched, a little jerk. Yep, that's <laughs> dad hated Rugrats so much. Well, that dad looks so tired. He was probably in his like late twenties. The guy looked like he was fifty. I know. No, so all that this preempts it because we watched movies were on all the time, and yeah, I I was I had to be kindergarten probably because I knew the house we were living in, and we moved when I was in the first grade, so I was kindergarten or preschool. And yeah, and my dream was that the penguin from Batman, Danny DeVito. Yeah, yeah. That he was in our garage and he was pouring this like um, poison around me, <laughs> and I was gonna die. And I was like, Scr I know it's so terrifying. It's terrifying. <laughs> it was. I did. He was in my garage. That penguin. It was terrible. I woke up, freaked out, went to mom and dad's room, but I still remember that dream. He was pouring poison. <laughs> it was like a liquid around me in the garage, like in the garage of that house. Like I was. Standing so you're there. stuck in the garage. Are you tied to a chair? Like what's no, the scenario? No, I'm just standing there and I'm screaming for help. 
Oh, and he's surrounding you. Well, did he have like a little maniacal Danny he, DeVito laugh? It was the whole, he was the, it was the. He was the penguin. Yeah, he was the character of the movie. That is more frightening. I'm picturing Danny DeVito as his oh, own I'm person. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, that's just Danny <laughs> DeVito. And I'm like, he's, he's such a sweet guy. No, 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 he was penguin. What? That was Danny DeVito that played yeah. the penguin, right? Yeah, yeah. That's right. An epic performance. You still remember it to I, this day. I do, and it gave me nightmares. I'm picturing like that feels like an episode of Always Sunny in Philadelphia. That's so mm-hmm. terrible. Which he's also in, and oh, he's yeah. hilarious in that. And hey, so it makes it more comedic. Maybe you should f- watch that. What about your dream or I, nightmare? I have a terrible memory of anything. Really? Okay. Yeah. But the most recent dream, which I told you about, was that you and our associate producer, Skylar, were co-hosting the oh, Ramsey okay. show. And I was very upset because I was like, <laughs> why is Skylar co-hosting the <laughs> She doesn't have jurisdiction to host the Ramsey show. That's not her job. And everyone was cool with it. And they were like, yeah, absolutely. Skylar co-hosts the Ramsey show with Rachel. There you go. Alex, do you have one? <laughs> I, I have a recurring dream. <gasps> Do you have the same dream over and over again? It's it's the same situation. Mm. Not the same place, but where I'm incredibly late and underprepared. Oh, I know, it's yeah. so boring. For what? There's For like psychologists the that will going. diagnose that. I know. That that's there's what something I'm deeper. I've literally that... never seen you late or underprepared. That's why well, it's, just, it's a fear. I know. Let's look at him. He's dreaming about it. Yeah. He's so scared of it. That's You're right. going to be okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, be okay. This is a safe place, Alex. Thank you. I want you to go. so much. I want Rachel to go to like counseling and be like, so. Danny DeVito is the penguin. I just can't <laughs> shake it. He's pouring poison. Like, I want him to see what they say. Probably your parents shouldn't let you watch those terrible movies in preschool. <laughs> can you watch Danny DeVito today? Time. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, can you watch him in anything? Like, do you watch yeah, Matilda? Yeah. And you're like, I can't watch this. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I can't. When did that movie come out? Let's see. Batman. Probably early 90s. 1991. Alex is movie buff. If it's 91, Alex gets a 92. <gasps> uh, you're dead wrong. I, I was four. <laughs> so... I was four years old. Oh my god! So it probably came out on VHS because we were watching it. We watched it at home. Have you watched any Batman since, or do you have trauma? No, you I'm have just Batman no, trauma. I don't have Batman trauma. No. Have I'm, you I'm seen good. them all? I'm, I'm healed. How about penguins? No. We're gonna get to the bottom of this. Yeah, the penguins really <laughs> scare me. I don't like penguins. She hates penguins, but you love Robert Pattinson. <laughs> have you seen that one? The Batman? Have you seen uh, Dark Knight? Colin Farrell. Shoot. Are you a Christian yeah. Bale? Uh, or are you yes, Ben I Affleck? I saw Christian Bale. Who's your favorite Batman? It's I've, like choosing I, your favorite yeah, James Bond. Yeah, I've seen the... I will say, um, George Clooney. Is that the one that I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. Was Poison Ivy? Yeah. I think arguably oh, he was... How is that? I'm, was he the know. worst Batman? Yes. George Clooney? Y'all didn't like George Clooney? I don't it's think anyone... the worst movie. I'll put it that way. Really? Yeah, I yeah. love Clooney. I think he was the worst Batman. With Poison Ivy? Yeah. Wow, okay. Uma Thurman. Oh, yeah, how about uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger Arnold with Schwarzenegger, the guy? Arnold Schwarzenegger, Mr. Freeze. Who, who played that one? Miss, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Same. No, no, no. Who played Batman in the Arnold Schwarzenegger one? Yeah, George Clooney. Is that all the same movie? It's all the same movie. No, no. <laughs> Mr. Freeze, Penguin, and Poison Ivy are the same movie? Not, not Penguin. That's Batman Returns. Okay, who's Penguin's Batman? Uh, Michael Keaton. Okay. That was a good Penguin, though. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm at the Poison Ivy Arnold Schwarzenegger one. <laughs> I think that might be my favorite. Wow. I haven't seen them all. I've seen like three. And you like Bluebell ice cream over Jenny's. No, I like Mayfield <laughs> over Jenny's. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, that was George. fun. Send well, us more of your questions. We are desperate for good, <laughs> guilty as charged questions. DM us at Rachel Cruz on Instagram or at George Camel with a K. And we will report these questions to the producers who will ask us. Mm-hmm. That's fun. Okay, who right. finished first? Uh, you're first, but it was so good. What's your rating? I mean, honestly, George, I may go 10 out of 10. It's a 10 out of 10. Like I, I can find no I would, fault. I would order that at a restaurant. Wow. Way to go. Uh, Ibu, our production coordinator, came up with this well one today. Done. It was delicious. Right? And last minute. You did Lindsay it? was sick last minute, right? So Ibu, like, really. Crushed it. Yep. Thanks, Emily. That's a good one. Here's what's in this drink. Fresh mint. You got to have it fresh. Lime wedges, some agave, and sparkling water. So great. It's very simple, but very tasteful. And the cost breakdown, $1.32. Say what you will about the mocktails, but you can't beat the price. Can't beat the price. So check out the recipe in the show notes. Give it a try this weekend. Make a batch. Make it for your kids. They're going to love it. Mm -hmm. All right. It's closing time. So make sure to leave a review, you guys, if you can, if you will. If you you so please. And you will. Uh, You're going to like it. They're very helpful. Share the episode with a friend. Spread the word about this show. We want your friends and family to join in. And 
If you have a New Year's resolution, maybe a money one, leave it in the comments. Listen to more Smart Money Happy Hour. We I think that should know. be on everyone's oh, that's New a Year's good, goals. That's a good New Year's resolution. That's an achievable goal. Just hit subscribe and then just listen once a week yeah. for 34 minutes. That's right. Change your life. every Thursday, there is a new episode of Smart, Smart Money, money happy, happy Hour. hour.